Genesis 12 is a pivotal chapter in the Bible, marking the beginning of God's covenant relationship with Abram, later known as Abraham. This chapter introduces the call of Abram and the promises God makes to him, which become foundational to the history of Israel and the unfolding of biblical theology. Here's a summary of the key points in the chapter. Before we start, we'd like to ask for your support. If you enjoy our video, please hit the like button. This will help us reach more people and create content for you. Now let's get started with today's video. Genesis 12 is a key chapter in the Bible because it introduces us to one of the most significant figures in the biblical narrative, Abram later known as Abraham. This chapter marks the beginning of God's special relationship with Abram, setting the foundation for the covenant that would shape the history of the Israelites and by extension, influence the course of salvation history as understood in both Judaism and Christianity. The call of Abram, Genesis 12, one to three. The chapter opens with God's command to Abram. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Genesis 12, one. This command is striking because God calls Abram to leave everything familiar, his homeland, his extended family, and the security of his father's household. Abram is asked to set out on a journey to an unknown destination, one that only God will reveal to him. At this point, Abram's faith is being tested. He is asked to trust in God's guidance without knowing the full details of what lies ahead. This moment encapsulates a theme central to Abram's life, trust in God's promises, even when they seem uncertain or impossible. In return for this step of faith, God makes five significant promises to Abram in verses two through three. I will make you into a great nation. Despite the fact that Abram and his wife Sarai are childless at this point, God promises to make Abram's descendants into a great nation. This is a profound promise given Abram's old age and the barrenness of his wife. I will bless you. This blessing is comprehensive, encompassing both material prosperity and divine favor. Abram will experience God's provision protection, and guidance throughout his life. I will make your name great. God promises that Abram's name will be renowned, respected, and remembered. In ancient times, having a great name meant being highly esteemed by others, and it implied both a lasting legacy and a life of significance. You will be a blessing. Abram himself is to be a source of blessing to others. This promise points beyond just Abram's personal well-being. It suggests that through Abram, Others will experience God's favor. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This final promise extends beyond Abram's immediate family or nation. It looks forward to a universal blessing for all the nations of the earth, a promise that Christians later interpret as fulfilled in Jesus Christ, a descendant of Abram. This moment marks a major transition in the biblical story. Up until this point in Genesis, the focus has been on humanity as a whole. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah and the flood, the Tower of Babel. But now the narrative zooms in on one individual, Abram, through whom God intends to bring about his plan of redemption for the whole world. Abram's journey of faith, Genesis 12, four through nine. In verse four, Abram's faith becomes visible through his obedience. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram's immediate obedience to God's command is a key aspect of his character. Despite the uncertainties, Abram takes his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all their possessions and sets out for the land of Canaan. Abram is 75 years old when he begins this journey, an age when most people might have been settled and unwilling to start afresh. As they travel, Abram builds altars to the Lord at various points along the way. These altars are acts of worship and gratitude but they also serve as markers of God's presence and promise in Abram's life. Building an altar in the land of Canaan, where Abram is a foreigner, symbolizes that this land is being claimed for God. In verse seven, God appears to Abram again and reiterates his promise. To your offspring, I will give this land. This promise adds a specific dimension to the earlier promise of becoming a great nation. Now God ties the promise of descendants to the land of Canaan making it clear that this is the place where Abram's future nation will settle and thrive. Abram in Egypt, Genesis 12, 10 to 20. The latter half of Genesis 12 shifts the narrative to a significant test of Abram's faith, 
A severe famine strikes Canaan, forcing Abram and his family to go down to Egypt in search of food and refuge. This move to Egypt is reminiscent of other biblical figures who would later seek refuge there, including Jacob and his sons during Joseph's time, and Mary and Joseph with the infant Jesus in the New Testament. However, upon arriving in Egypt, Abram faces a dilemma. Sarai, his wife, is described as a beautiful woman, and Abram fears that the Egyptians might kill him to take Sarai. To protect himself, Abram devises a deceptive plan. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. Genesis 12, 12 to 13. Abram's fear leads him to act in a way that contrasts with his earlier faith. Instead of trusting in God's protection, he relies on deception to safeguard his life. Sarai is indeed taken into Pharaoh's palace, and as Abram predicted, he is treated well because of her. He acquires wealth, livestock, servants, and more because of Sarai's presence in Pharaoh's household. But Abram's plan backfires. God intervenes to protect Sarai, inflicting serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household. Pharaoh, realizing that Sarai is Abram's wife, rebukes Abram for his deception and sends him away, though he allows Abram to keep all the wealth he had acquired during his time in Egypt. This episode highlights a key theme in Abram's life. His faith, while real and commendable, is not without its moments of weakness. Abram is not portrayed as a perfect figure, but rather as a man who sometimes struggles with fear and doubt. Yet even in these moments, God remains faithful to his promises. God protects Abram and Sarai, ensuring that the covenantal plan is not derailed by human failings. Theological Significance of Genesis 12 Genesis 12 is not just a story about one man's journey. It is a foundational text for understanding God's relationship with humanity. Abram's call and the promises God makes to him establish several key themes that resonate throughout the rest of Scripture. Faith and Obedience Abram's life is a model of faith, demonstrating the importance of trusting in God's promises even when the future is unclear. His willingness to leave everything behind and follow God's command is an example of the kind of faith that leads to righteousness, as Paul would later argue in Romans 4. Blessing and Covenant God's promises to Abram form the basis of the covenant that will be fully ratified in later chapters. This covenant is not just about Abram and his immediate descendants, but about the ultimate blessing of all nations through him. This universal dimension of the covenant is crucial for understanding the Bible's overarching narrative of redemption, God's faithfulness. Despite Abram's moments of weakness and deception, God remains faithful to his promises. This theme of divine faithfulness in the face of human frailty is one that recurs throughout the Bible. The land of promise, the land of Canaan becomes a central focus of God's covenant with Abram and his descendants. It is the physical space where God's promises will be fulfilled and it becomes a symbol of God's faithfulness to Israel throughout their history. Foreshadowing the future, Abram's journey to Egypt and his eventual return foreshadows the later experiences of Israel. Just as Abram's descendants would later go down to Egypt because of a famine and be delivered by God's intervention, so too does Abram experience this pattern in his own life. Conclusion Genesis 12 marks the beginning of the patriarchal narrative and sets the stage for God's redemptive plan through Abram and his descendants. Abram's call, his journey of faith, and even his missteps all serve to illustrate the central biblical themes of faith, covenant, and divine blessing. In Abram's story, we see the unfolding of God's plan to restore the broken relationship between humanity and the Creator, a plan that ultimately finds its fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. Please subscribe my YouTube channel. I hope you like this video. Thank you.